Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock 2 Studio and today I'm sharing with you the April 2022 Tag It Tuesday Challenge. This is a Facebook group run by Sherry Whitfield and you can go and join it. It's just called Tag It Tuesday and they, she has a challenge each month that has some prompts. You can do the prompts in any order that you want and I think it's just uh, use... Maybe just use two or use three or something like that. But I just always use all of them because why not? <laughs> so um, the first thing I was thinking about was the colors. Well, the colors were lettuce green and lilac. And I had this paper that I had just used up excess paint from another project that I was working on. A couple different pieces of paper here that had some of those spring colors, um, kind of light greens, yellows. Um, purples like you know lavendery purple and I thought it would be kind of fun to just cover the whole tag with these papers um, this is a shipping tag a manila shipping tag um, it's a popular activity to alter these um, you just buy them at the office store or in in my case I ordered a bunch of them I actually ended up getting like a thousand of them in one pack from Amazon but Altering them is something that a lot of people do to practice their mixed media techniques. You can make books out of them by attaching them together. You can use them as bookmarks, um, send them to people. They fit really well in a business size envelope with one stamp. So you can, you know, send them as little, little interesting gifts. So I started with the background paper, which of course has acrylic paint on it. And then uh, another one of the steps was to remove color through a stencil using a baby wipe or using some type of wipe. And so I grabbed a couple of these ATC size stencils from Stencil Girl. They come in, in a set of nine and you can cut them apart. Um, an ATC is three and a half by two and a half. So about, it's about the size of a playing card and you get nine different designs on the stencil. So I grabbed a couple of those and I was sticking with circle type shapes because the background paper had a lot of dots and circles on it. And I decided to try using remove uh, color through a stencil with alcohol ink because the two colors that were listed, lettuce green and lilac are both um, Ranger alcohol ink colors. And since the acrylic paint on that background paper makes it sealed then you can use alcohol ink over it so it worked it worked fine I put some 91% alcohol on a little torn piece of dirty baby wipe uh, with a sprayer and then I just dripped the color onto my tag the lettuce color didn't show up that much because the background is pretty wild and the lilac color showed up a lot better and then I just put the stencil over the top and removed the color using that that little wipe that had alcohol on it. To remove the color, you're going to need to have alcohol or blending solution because um, alcohol ink does dry down permanent. It doesn't affect it by water. So then um, another one of the steps was to add aluminum foil. And I had this aluminum foil tape. It's something that you buy at the the Home Depot or something like that, a home store. And it's for, I think it's for taping duct work. But it's self-adhesive aluminum basically is what it is, like aluminum foil. And it's a lot easier to stick it down because it's got sticky stuff on the back than it is to have to glue down a piece of kitchen foil. So I dripped a little bit of that alcohol ink on a piece of that and just attached it to the tag. I actually wished later that it wasn't there because it was distracting or maybe that I'd put it at the bottom or something like that but you know it is what it is and I can't really pull it back off. Another one of the steps was to use an envelope and I saved these security envelopes because I like the interesting patterns on the inside. This one has black ink on the inside sometimes they're blue or red maybe even green. Um, I haven't seen seen that many colors other than blue and black but there are other colors I know and the idea of that envelope is that it has all this print on the inside so that you can't see through it like if you put a check or something or something that you don't want someone else to see through the envelope 
um, it's a good idea to use a security envelope. And because they have pattern and they're interesting, I save them. Some of them. I mean, I don't save all of them. And so I used that as kind of the base of my uh, focal images that I plan on putting on here because there is another prompt that says, use an image of something you see out your window. And since there was that lettuce green going on and I had this little piece, it's actually an index card that had excess paint on it um, through and some stenciling on it. It was green, it was the perfect color for something that I see right outside my window, which is prickly pear cactus. I have lots of different cactuses. I live in Tucson, Arizona, for those of you who don't know that. And so um, cactus everywhere, cactus everywhere. And prickly pear, to us here in Arizona is actually almost a weed. It grows really easily and it's everywhere. And right now the ones in my yard, I have two I have two that are like the size of trees. They're like huge. They have been, you know, they've been there for probably I don't know, 100 years maybe. They're huge. And then I have smaller ones in and out the you know, the front and the back gardens and um the two in the front that are kind of just medium sized are blooming right now and they have a, a bright yellow kind of a, a bloom that looks kind of like a straw flower. Of course, I haven't ever picked the blooms off of them because it's a prickly pear and it is prickly. In the fall, uh, first the spring blooms will fall off and then they will start to grow in the same area of fruit. And then in the fall, it ripens into a dark, pink color and you can pick those fruit but the special way to do it well either you need to use tongs or something like that or else you can take a little kitchen torch and torch them before you grab them but you should probably still use <laughs> gloves it's the teeny teeny tiny little spines in them that get into your skin and it's so hard to get out so they are something that people use here in Arizona they make candy and syrup and um, you know you could you could make pretty much anything there. They're probably about the consistency of a fig. So you could make uh, Fig Newton type cookies out of them. Lots of things you can do with them. They have juice inside. The birds love them. So usually I just leave them on the plant and let them fall off. But yeah, they're uh, all over the place. So what I'm doing is just cutting out the shapes. It's kind of like an oval with a pointy end. And I'm just assembling what you know what it looks like <laughs> they just attack they've got pads also if you've ever eaten um, food that has no poles in it uh, that is a prickly pear pad the pad part is edible too and you might find it sometimes especially in like mexican food some people will stew the nepales i think they take the skin off maybe and use the inside of it and it kind of has the taste and texture of okra so it's kind of slimy and I'm not a big fan but nopalis is also something you can eat off this plant so it's a useful plant for those you wanted to know <laughs> so I built my prickly pear I added some yellow flowers to it because it is blooming right now in the spring and then another thing that I always see out my window almost every single day here in Arizona is the sun so I use that same stencil and some light yellow paint to put a sun up in the right hand corner of my tag. So I've completed all the different steps. I've used the colors and the prompts and now it's just time for finishing. I get out some Pitt Artist Brush Pins. These are made by Fabric Castell. They are an India ink pin. They don't have the flexible brush but they've got like a regular marker type brush. And if you are working on a sealed surface, like something that has acrylic paint on it, you have a few seconds to blend them before they dry down permanently. They're a very useful type of pen. Um, I enjoy them a lot. And so I'll probably, I'll try to put some links in this video if I remember. I've got a lot of things to do today, but I'll put some, some links to these pens and uh, shipping tags that you can buy on Amazon, stuff like that. They'll be um, Amazon links and then I'll also put a link to the stencil set that I used from Stencil Girl products. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I can put links to but I'll do it. I'll try to do it. 
I, I'm getting really lazy about it because I'm not sure how many people use the links. And so, you know, I do have a link to my Amazon affiliate store that has all kinds of stuff that I use below the video, but specific links to specific stuff I can also do. So I put, you know, a shadow around the prinkly pear to try to make it stand out. I put a little bit of orange on the, um, the sunshine, you know, things like that. And then at some point I decided, oh, I need a little bit more of that lilac color. So I put some down at the bottom where the ground is. Of course, the ground is more of like reddish clay here <laughs> or uh, dusty brown rocks. But um, hey, why not lilac? Sure. <laughs> I put some ink around the edges just to, to give a little bit of sh shadow around the edges. That's some um, archival ink, which is also a permanent ink. And then I decided maybe I wanted to lighten up the background. I now wish I hadn't done this, but everything is an experiment. And I thought, meh, that's got so much stuff going on in the background that it's hard to see the focal image. So I mixed a little bit of white paint with some glazing medium, which is a clear fluid medium that has no pigment. It's basically just paint with no pigment in it. And that makes the white more translucent. And then I painted around the background trying to kind of bring the cactus forward and push the background back. But I actually liked it better before I did this. But you might like it better after. I might like it better before. It's all just personal preference. I also decided I wanted to add some tinfoil somewhere else. So I cut a little circular shape out of the, the tinfoil tape and I put some uh, um, alcohol ink on that as well and put it in the center of the sunshine. You know, it's shiny. Of course, in the, the video, it's hard to see that it's shiny. It, you can't really tell, but it is. It's, you know, it's, it's tinfoil, so it's shiny. That's just the nature of it. And so that went to the center of the sunshine. The sunshine actually had some fun pattern on it already. Then of course I bumped into some of my shading and so I had to go back over it again with the chromium green um, artist pit pen. And it's starting to look better. Maybe I can see that, it, that there's cactus on there. So then I used a little bit of white Posca pen to add some highlights to the flowers and um, just, you know, trying to make things have more definition. And then I ended up adding a drop of that alcohol ink to each flower and made it more yellow. So that particular alcohol ink has mica in it, so it's a little bit shimmery too. But again, hard to see, <laughs> hard to see on the video. But what can you do? And then I ended up throwing some of that lettuce green alcohol ink onto my cactus pads and blotting it back to give another bit of, sh of shadow. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll add some pattern to the background. So I grabbed this, that other stencil and I just used that same leftover uh, transparent white and stenciled a little bit of those circles all over the background just so that one in the center wasn't, wasn't sad and by itself. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this project. Um, altering tags is, is a fun thing to do if you want to just do a tiny bit of art and work on your mixed media skills. Um, that group you can always go and ask to join. Uh, Tag It Tuesday uh, run by Sherry Whitfield. And she has challenge every month that has prompts and you can play along. Super easy, super fun. Um, hope to see you over there. So I did put a, a backing on this. Um, I always get the backs of my tags dirty. <laughs> so sometimes I layer them up with a piece of cardstock. This is a lilac piece of, of cardstock. Trimmed it down, fit it on there. I put a little word on there that says inspire because the tag was inspired by the plants in my backyard. So I thought that was appropriate, maybe inspired by the prompts um, from the group. And then I just put some fibers, punched the hole again and put some fibers on there. They're actually ribbon 
and a little bit of gold cord. So if you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up and leave a comment or question below. Uh, go over there, join the group. I'm sure Sherry would love to see you. Um, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That's always helpful. You can also join my channel membership. Um, that's $1.99 a month and you get exclusive real-time content, kind of teaching type content as well as an extra speed video of that same content on the 15th of each month. And you can also use my affiliate links um, that are down below the video or my affiliate store over on Amazon that helps me out. I also have merchandise below. All those things help my channel uh, grow and help me keep doing this uh, free content for you guys. <laughs> so thanks for watching. That's it for me. Bye-bye.